I'm Tom Miggert from Tom Miggert Photography and welcome to this series where we learn Photoshop step by step. Before we dive into this topic, I just want to take one minute to do a little bit of marketing and let you know about my Facebook page. Why do I have a Facebook page? Well, simply because it's different ways to actually follow my activities. And for those of you who might be wondering what's the point of actually liking Tom's page because I'm already subscribed to uh, his YouTube channel. Well, simply bear in mind that I do more than just publishing content on YouTube. I also um, release new photographs of mine and write articles on my blog. So if you wanna be notified of those, well, actually liking my Facebook page is a good way. Uh, if not, well, you'll be notified of my new videos using uh, the uh, YouTube subscription, but not of the beautiful photographs that I publish. So like my page. Well, this is it for the marketing minute. Now let's back to Photoshop. So until now we have uh, talked about tools in Photoshop one at a time. We're really taking our time for that. And uh, we focused on the tools that enable us to make a selection in a document. And I know you would like to see something else. Uh, adding some variety to it, but I'm afraid today is another day where we talk about selection as well because there is another tool. In fact, there are two tools that we'll talk about today just for the price of one that will enable you to make a selection. And, and that must be probably uh, the last tool that we could consider being a selection tool. So there is hope, guys. There is hope. We're progressing. Uh, and the tool in question is actually called the quick selection tool. And the other one is the magic wand tool. You'll notice that they both share the keyboard shortcut W and as you know by now if you want to switch from one or the other if you press the shift key and you press W well you can switch you can swap the tool you want. Also you may be wondering Tom I'm confused. I am confused because until now your toolbox was actually on the left and now it's on the right. How come? Well you see Photoshop is a very modular um, program. So meaning that all the panels you see, you can pretty much move them wherever you want to. So by default, your bar is actually here on the left. And as you just saw, all you need to do to move it is just here you have a little line uh, with some texture and if you click on it, you can move it to wherever you want to. I could actually have it here if I wanted to. But I like to have it here on my right. And you notice that now we have a blue line, I can release it and it will stick to it. Why do I like to have it here? Well, because you will get to learn this, that there's a lot of activities taking place in the panels here on the right. And notice, they're on the right. They could also be on the left. Uh, but they just happen to be on the right by default and I never bothered moving them around. So I have most of the activities um, when I'm not working on the document, but just making uh, some changing, some changes, sorry, I do it on the left in those panels. And so when I want to select a tool that sometimes, believe it or not, I may forget the sh keyboard shortcut because there's just too many, I ended up crossing the entire screen to click and select the tool that I want. Whereas now I can just simply go where I want and I don't have to cross the screen. So that's the reason why I like to be here, but do not be too bothered, I hope, because you can just do the same and just get a sense of it. So the quick selection tool is here. To illustrate the quick selection tool and the magic wand, I need to create a new document. And we've seen how to do that in the past. So Control or Command N, and I just want a white document here. So I just click OK. I'm going to zoom in, Control or Command Zero. For those of you who are new to this series, you may be put off by all this keyboard shortcut that I'm throwing at you. Well, fear not, because with every videos that are published, there's always a link in the description pointing to my blog article that provides you with a list of all the keyboard shortcut mentioned in the video. Um, and so if you discovered as well something that I, that is new in this video that you have the feeling that I'm not spending enough time on, it's probably because I've already covered in the previous episode. So in that case, if you're new to Photoshop, I invite you to actually start the series from the first episode and join us until now. So we have this new document and uh, what I want to do is I want to actually use the marquee tool to create something. Uh, and you know, many of you have asked me, Tom, why are we not using a real photograph and walk us through the tools using a real photograph? Well, 
To be honest, it's a choice. It's a choice I made because I believe that in order to use the tools to create something afterwards, you will need to understand the tools and to not be fooled by uh, the photograph that you have in front of you. And sometimes the tools react differently and we'll, we will see this in the future, but I want you to really understand, grasp the idea of what each tool does and all the options we have with it. Hence, we go very, very simply, uh, very simple with uh, selections, making shapes, uh, rectangles and circle, because that's all you need to really understand how those tools work. So here, we're just gonna make a rectangle. So let's make a big rectangle like this and let's fill it, Shift F5. And let's use the color picker this time. Until now, we use the foreground and background color, which is white and black today here, but let's use the color picker and let's use green. It doesn't really matter, click OK. And now let's make another selection uh, to it and let's make it a circle. So um, Shift M to switch to the elliptical marquee tool and let's make a selection right here. Let's fill it as well, color picker. Uh, let's choose a different color, blue, that will be good. And let's switch back to um, the rectangle, Shift M and uh, let's make a rectangle. Oop. Didn't want to click on this, Control Z, I'll command Z, I just want to make a new selection. Here we go, rectangle like this. And let's fill it, Shift F5, do the color, color picker, and let's go for red, or some, somewhere like this. And deselect. So we have this shape, we've seen that in the past, if you wanted to actually select all of this, all these colors and stuff, we could actually use the marquee tool, yes, but it would be complicated. We could use the lasso tool, which could be complicated and actually not too much if you use the um, magnetic lasso tool variant that we talked about in the previous episode. But today, the focus is on the quick selection tool. As you can notice, the icon looks like a paintbrush, basically, and um, well, I know we haven't seen the paintbrush yet. We will, it's right here, we will in uh, very soon. Uh, but what you see here on the screen is basically the equivalent of your brush. And you notice that it has a certain width and you can change that width by just going here at the top left corner in and click on this where you have 50. It just means that now the width of your brush is 50 pixels, but you can increase or decrease that width. Let's increase it dramatically press enter. Well, actually that's just a bit too big. So let me reduce it. So I click back. I went a little bit too crazy on this one. Uh, and you know this, I increased it. You can also go um, use the keyboard to actually increase and decrease that width by just using the bracket keys, just like we saw with the magnetic lasso tool when we wanted to regulate its width. So remember, opening bracket, you reduce the width, closing bracket, you increase its width. So here, I'm just going to use a regular uh, value here, 70 is not too bad. And let's look at the options that we have next to the width here. We have a brush, then a brush with a plus and a brush with a minus. Does that ring a bell? That's very similar to what we had with the marquee tool or the lasso tool. And that's your selection options. And by default, you're very likely to have the option set to this one which is basically, if you click, you create a new selection. And then you'll see that as soon as you, so now I'm clicking and you notice, wow, selected green right away. Before I click again, notice that now the option switch to the plus automatically. And so what it means is that now if I actually I click and I drag, look what happened. Oh, I just selected the blue. I just click and drag, I selected the pink or red, whatever that is. Is that not the tool that we've been waiting for? Is it not the tool that we wanted to make a selection super quickly? Well, it is. And you notice that although we have three colors, we've got the green, the blue and the red, the tool didn't, it didn't matter. It would actually start by finding, let me deselect this so we understand. And let me reduce its size. Here, you see I dragged the selection, but I could release. And it will actually make a selection of everything based on the contrast here. So there's a clear contrast between the white and the green and the blue and the green. But if I actually click, and I don't need to be in the green actually, I could just simply be in the blue directly. You notice it selected all the contour of the blue region. And same, I can just click in the red. I don't even need to drag. Sometimes you will need to drag, but sometimes you don't. 
And what's important here is not because you're in green that you cannot add the blue or you cannot add the red. It will just select everything where you um, bring your cursor to. Obviously, you could have the minus. And remember, instead of pressing the minus here, you could actually hold the Alt key. And when you see the Alt key, it may be difficult to see here on the screen, but look at the cursor. Let me see if I actually bring the cursor bigger. Well, that actually, no, it doesn't change the size of this little point in the middle. But I hope you can see that by holding it, I now have a minus. If I leave it as by default, it's a plus. Notice the option in the top left corner. I press the Alt key, automatically it goes to the minus selection. And what the minus selection does is exactly the same as what we've seen in the past. Let's imagine I don't want the blue here. I press the Alt key, keep it, hold, keep it held, click here. And I deselect. You see, now I'm going to have to do, whoop, backward layer is not currently available, clearly, because I pressed the, the combination of key. That's wrong. I wanted to decrease that size, so just the bracket key. And now, let's press Alt key again, and I just want to deselect that part. And now, the blue is actually not selected. Oh, actually, it's not correct, because we can see there's some residue around the contour. So let me just go quickly here. And quickly here, and that seems to be doing a pretty good job. So now I have the green and the red only selected. And hey, if I didn't want a green, I'll key. And here you go. I basically deselect it. A little bit left here, and we only have the red. So have you seen now the quick selection tool? What does it do? Enables you to make a quick selection. Duh, that wasn't difficult. So you see, it's a very powerful tool. Again, we'll see some of the features, some of the options that we've seen in the past were not talked about. Samples, or layer, auto enhance, refine age. We keep it for later, not for now. Uh, but you notice there is, because it's a selection tool, we f it's normal that we find the same options that we had in marketing and the last tool. What's the next tool? The next tool is the magic wand tool. So to illustrate the magic wand tool, what I want to do is I want to create a new document. So shift, uh, not shift, control or command N and let's zoom in, control or command zero. <clears throat> and let's use actually the marquee tool and use the elliptical marquee tool. And what I want to do is I want to do a big circle right here and I'm going to fill it with some colors. So shift F5 and I'm going to use the color picker and let's start with uh, green, why not? So I click OK. And I'm just going to move, you remember, if I click and drag while I'm inside the selection, I move um, the contour of that selection and not its content. And let's fill with the same color. So Shift F5 and OK. Now let's click and drag a little bit and let's fill with color. Shift F5. Let's change the color to uh, somewhere like blue. Click OK. And this time I want to change the opacity. I want to put 60%. The reason why I want to change the opacity is you'll see, I don't want the new color to really obfuscate the green color. So if I click OK now, we still have the blue color here against the white, but we now have the uh, third color mix of the blue and the green, and that's what I wanted to obtain. So I'm going to make another circle right here, another oval, uh, rather similar, just move it rather in the same fashion. And let's fill it with the same color. Shift F5, I don't even need to go in the color picker, click OK. And let's click and drag to make another and fill with a different color. And let's go to blue, dark blue, click OK. And then let's make another circle inside here. And you guess it, we're gonna go with the same, uh, the same tone. So Shift F5, blue, I go OK. And let's click and drag again, and let's go um, dramatic. So Shift F5, let's change the color, and let's go for a powerful red. Click OK, and now I'm just gonna move this one, and let's go here, and let's fill it as well. Shift F5, same color, like this, and I deselect. So now that we have this weird uh, shape and different colors, it's time for us to go to the quick magic tool. And you'll see that tool is really amazing. It uses colors to define a zone. And um, first off, because we're working with a selection tool, you'll notice that we have the selection options at the top. So same as before, 
The first time you click, it's a new selection. Then you can add to the selection, you can subtract to the selection or do an intersect of the selection. So that is common to all the selection tools that we've seen so far. But because we're dealing with colors, when I click here in the green, you notice that my green is selected here and not this one, which would, we could consider being a type of green. Well, the reason why it didn't select this one is to do with the tolerance here. So you see the tolerance, it accepts a value between zero and 255. If you hear color and you hear the number 255, many of you may actually remember or know about um, RGB, you know, red, green, and blue. That's basically a color profile, RGB. And it, it basically consists of different shades of green, different shade of red, and different shade of blue. I didn't say, I didn't mention them in the right order. It's red, green, and blue. But yeah, different shades of red, different shade of green, different shade of blue, and the mix of shades basically give you the different colors that you can get. Um, and uh, 255 is the maximum of shades that you get in the RGB profile for a color. So for red, 255 shades, 255 shade of green, 255 shades of blue. So that's where the 250 uh, value, 255 value comes from. So here we have one value, meaning that it's going to consider only one tone, one shade of green, or at least whatever color I click on here. So clearly, between this green and that green, if we want to call it green, there's definitely more than one tone. There's a lot of graduation in between. So it didn't consider it. On top of it, here you notice we have sample size. Well, what it does is that when I actually click in that zone, you remember before in a quick selection tool, we had a width for our um, selection tool, similar to a brush. Well, with the uh, magic wand, you don't really have a width per se, uh, but you have a similar thing, which is the sample size. So here, when you click, it will look at a three by three average zone. So wherever you click, it's gonna look at eight pixels, three by three. Then if you want more, five by five, 11 by 11, 31 by 31, 51, one, and one on one, and you can increase this, or just doing a point simple. Point simple means you select, you consider only the point where I selected, and that was that green here. Um, as I said, tolerance here is one, but let's see if I had increased this to 100 and to 150, and I click OK, and let's deselect it. If now I click on it, you notice that it d still doesn't select this value here. So let's increase this. There's clearly more than 150 shades in between. Let's do 200. I deselect and I click here. And now you see that it actually added this color to my initial selection because whatever that color is, whatever its name is, it's actually within the 200 shades of that first color that I actually clicked on. You notice that we have created this shape here with the same colors, but why did I do it? Well, I did it to illustrate an options that we have right here at the top. You notice it's called contiguous. So as the name implies, when that option is actually tech, well, the magic wand tool will only consider the colors that are actually around, that are contiguous to the select point uh, or the point that I actually selected. If I actually uncheck this option, and I deselect now. If I click here on the green, notice that not only select the green and the shade here of green, but he also selected the green and the same uh, shade of green here. So I hope you understand how that works. We also, because we're dealing with um, contour and selection, we have all the options that we found as well with the marquee tool and the lasso tool, and that was the entire alias option as well as sample or layers and the refine edge. We'll see uh, those in a, a different episode because they are used across the selection tools. So let's look at the selection modes here just for uh, the sake of it. And to make it simple, uh, let's change the selection, uh, the tolerance back to one. So I deselect here and I make the green. Now I want to select this shade as well. So what I do, you may remember, I press the shift key. So by pressing the shift key, you notice the option at the top is switching, as well as a little plus symbol appearing under the cursor. So if I click, 
uh, add it to that selection. I can add the blue one as well. Now, if I wanted to actually remove this green here, I press the Alt key and I click on this one. And you notice that, well, actually now you might not notice it, but what is actually selected is the green and the blue. You want a proof? Well, the proof is if I actually sh change the color. Shift F5 and let's change the color to something totally um, different. In fact, let's change it to the foreground, to the background color, which is black, as you can see right here. And let's go for 100%. Click OK. And you notice that I was right. The only colors that were selected, that were selected, were, I need to go back in time, the blue and the green. And now if I go back, you see the black. So how did I actually go back? Well, you have uh, the options right here. It's the step backward. Um, so you notice that if I just do uh, shift Z, well, it doesn't do much or it will do only the last step. But if you want to go more than one step behind, then you actually need to do to use the step backward and to do step backward. So you notice it's Alt, Control, Z on the PC or Option, Command, Z on the PC. And I go back in time. If I want to step forward, you notice know, step forward right here. It's actually shift control Z if you're on a PC or shift command Z on a Mac. So shift control or command Z and I'm back forward, back forward. That sounds like a movie title. Well, basically that's all for today. I hope you found this informative and I like to think that this was the last tool uh, that I would consider being a selection tool. Uh, after the marquee, the lasso, the quick selection tool, and the magic wand tool. So let me know in the comments what you uh, think of that tool. If you found it useful, um, don't forget to check the article with all the um, shortcut, uh, keyboard shortcut that I've mentioned. And you can also post a comment there if you want. And until next time, this is Tommy Good saying, if you like it, well, capture it and maybe play in Photoshop. Ciao.